One of our focuses um, within our institution and, and what's moving forward I think in the field is to look at the development of PSMA targeted radionuclide therapy. So PSMA or prostate specific membrane antigen is a cell surface, cell surface antigen that is present on the vast majority of prostate cancer tumors. Um, it is overexpressed with more aggressive disease and increased expression when there's resistance to androgen receptor targeted therapy, including abradrin and dilutamide. So it's a target that remains very relevant in the current era. We are able to target PSMA on live tumor cells um, in humans, either by, by uh, carriers um, that are large, which are usually monoclonal antibodies, or small, small molecules, ligands, peptides, um, inhibitors, they're all more or less synonymous for smaller um, type carriers. And independently, they've both been studied um, over a, a number of different years. Uh, what we presented uh, as a trial in progress now is the first combination of that. So what we know about the antibody is that it's large, has a long circulation time. Um, it, goes to the tumor, but also because of circulation time, if it's carrying a radioactive payload, it circulates through the bone marrow and there might be a decrease in blood counts or myelosuppression as the, the primary toxicity. But it's too big to get into sites that have a little bit of PSMA expression, such as the kidney, the salivary glands, and the small bowel. On the other hand, we have small molecules that are being developed and there's two randomized trials, a randomized phase two as well as a hopefully registration randomized phase three. Um, the advantage of those is that they rapidly get into sites with PSMA expression. Um, the disadvantage is they get into all the sites of PSMA expression carrying whatever their, whatever their payload is, um, which could cause some damage to the salivary glands, the kidney, or the small bowel. We do see some toxicity. Um, prospective studies look like it's the majority of patients will have it's usually just grade one and reversible, but with uh, radionuclide like lutetium, there is at least some minor damage to the salivary glands. And then we worry about what will happen to the kidney, although we've never really seen with any of the agents any significant uh, renal failure. The intent of what we'd like to do, because we've seen through a number of different radiation studies, the higher the dose we get to the tumor, the better the outcome is. So if we're able to deliver the same radioactive, peptide, uh, radioactive uh, particle, lutetium-177, via two different carrying agents at slightly lower doses than their maximum tolerated dose, will get more radiation to the tumor and less to these kind of off-target sites. So for the antibody, the bone marrow, for the small molecules, the salivary glands, kidney, and, and intestine. So that's what this, this study is. We, we launched the study, we finished the first cohort uh, we don't really have results yet, um, but what we presented was the overall study design and concept, as well as the preclinical pre work that led to the study, showing that there's non-competitive binding because they bind to different sites on PSMA, and in um, animal xenograft models, there was a more than, than additive um, killing of the, of the tumor cells. So we're now bringing that into humans. Our overall platform is to optimize the delivery of PSMA targeted radionuclide therapy to patients. And that is uh, in some ways by optimizing a dose and schedule either alone or in combination, but also to look at the patient population. Um, that includes partly imaging. Um, but what we also presented is, uh, is preliminary work of 25 patients. Uh, we had tumors where we performed whole exome sequencing and we looked at certain targeted genes within the whole exome sequencing as a, as a start, um, including uh, those uh, that are in the DNA repair family, as well as the androgen receptor family. Um, and overall, what we saw is that the, this presence of somatic or germline BRCA1 or BRCA2 was associated with an improved progression-free survival. The presence of P53 was associated with a worse progression for survival, so both what we would expect for a radiation-based type of a therapy. And then um, when we look at overall survival, BRCA2 stood out as having a superior overall survival in those that received uh, targeted radionuclide therapy. Um, overall, we'd expect for a patient population just kind of generically 
that has BRCA1 or BRCA2, they tend to do a little bit worse overall. Um, we hypothesize that through the mechanism of action, which is damaged in DNA with radiation, that is why they may do better with this, and we're really expanding the number of patients and number of tumors that we're looking at their tumor genomics.